Hi everyone, and welcome to this lecture on tuples, or tuples as some people like to call them. And in Python, tuples are very similar to lists. However, they have one key difference, and that is they have immutability. So they're immutable, meaning they cannot be changed. And that comes from the term mutation, so they cannot be mutated or changed. And that basically means once an element is assigned to an index position inside a tuple, you can't grab that element and then reassign it to something else like you could with a list. And the way you construct tuples is very similar to a list, except instead of using square braces, you use parentheses. Let's explore tuples a little more in a Jupyter Notebook. So let's get started. Hopefully you'll have quite an intuition as far as how to use tuples based on what you've learned about lists. We're going to create a tuple called t. We'll say t is equal to, and then in parentheses we'll write 1, 2, 3. And I'm also going to create my list, which is going to be very similar. We'll say 1, 2, 3, but notice it's square braces, so it's a list. And you can always confirm this using the built-in type function. So if I say type t, it returns back that it's a tuple, and if I ask type my list, it returns back that it's a list. Okay, so you can check the length of a tuple just like you could of a list. So length of t is three because there's three elements in that list, one, two, and three. And just like a list, it's also fine to mix object types. So we can have a string inside of a tuple along with a number that has no problems there. And also, just like a list, you can use slicing and indexing. So let's say I wanted to grab that string one. I could just say, give me what's at index zero, one there. I can then also do negative one, and I have two as a return because it's the last item in that tuple. So, so far, very similar to a list. There's also two basic built-in methods for tuples, and that is the index method and the count method. Let me show you an example of that. We're going to say t is a tuple with a comma a comma b and let's imagine we wanted to count how many times the letter a shows up in this tuple i can say t and then if you hit tab here you should see the two options you have either count or index so right away you'll notice that there's way less methods available for tuples than there are for lists so we're going to say, going to say t dot count and then We'll pass an A, and it returns back how many times A occurs in that tuple. And then what you can also do is say t.index of A, and this returns back the very first time this appears in your tuple. So notice that if it appears more than once, it will only return back the index location that it appears at first. And if we do the same thing for B, the very first time a B occurs is at index 2. So if you take a look at the T, it's right here, A, A, B. Later on, we'll learn how to use control flow logic like for loops to grab all the index locations of repeated elements. And finally, let's get to really what makes a tuple difference, and that's the immutability. And I really can't stress enough that this is what makes a tuple a tuple different than a list. So let's check out our tuple right now. And let's also check out that list we created, my list. Let's reassign the first element of my list to be the string new. So right now my list has no problems with that. It says, okay, I'll reassign the first element to be new. If I try to do the same thing with the tuple, and I say new here, it's going to say type error tuple object does not support item assignment. And that's basically what makes a tuple different than a list. Now I'm sure you're wondering, well, why would I even bother using tuples when they have fewer available methods and they don't have the flexibility of a list? And to be honest, as you're beginning to program, you're not going to be using tuples that often. It's only as you become more comfortable with Python and become a more advanced programmer that you'll begin to see the benefit of tuples. And what you're going to be using tuples for mainly is when you're passing around objects in your program and you need to make sure that they don't accidentally get changed. 
And that's when the tuple really becomes a great solution. So it provides a very convenient source of what's known as data integrity. The fact that we can't do reassignments like this by accident, we'll get an error instead, is going to be really useful when you want to make sure that elements don't get flipped or reassigned later on in larger pieces of code. So kind of keep this in your toolkit, and later on I'm sure we'll be pulling out the tuple again so we can use it and really let it shine. For now, just remember that it has immutability and it looks really similar to a list, except we use parentheses instead of square brackets. Okay, that's it for tuples for now. Up next, we're going to show you how to do basic file input and output. We'll see you there.